refer to it in various other ways, but everyone knows it's a business acquisition act. Now, when when the chambers met the president, the president gave assurance to the chambers that this act is confined to the 37 ventures that are mentioned in the act. And he said this act will not be used to acquire any other business. But what has Mr. Kehli Rabukwala said? In addition to the 37 mentioned in the list, there is room for further acquisitions. So this is a contradiction. On the one hand, the government says, this law is confined to this 37 only. But the cap media spokesman says, more businesses will be acquired under this act. So this is a contradiction. So I asked the government to clarify this position. Then we take out to Sevenagala and Palavat. They are profit-making ventures. Ten years ago, they were loss-making ventures. It was privatized. Now, Sevenagala and Palavat, they are making profits of over 300 million. If there are shortcomings, government can inquire. That's a different matter. But they are profit-making ventures. So what is the aim of the government according to that? To make it profitable. But these two organizations are already profitable. But there are two factories, sugar factories in the hands of the government. Kantale and Hingurana, they are closed. So what the government should have done was to improve Hingurana and Kantale. Without improving Hingurana and Kantale, without improving that, they are taking over two profitable organizations. It's obvious this is a malicious acquisition. It borders on political revenge. Then, I asked the government to disclose, as stated by the media spokesman, to disclose the other business enterprises that are lined up for acquisition. Government must disclose that. We have a list of, prob of probable acquisitions. So I asked the government to disclose this list. <coughs> At a time when the government is canvassing for foreign investments. You know, for the last so many years, the government and the previous government sent so many delegations abroad, spent millions of rupees holding seminars, they invited people here, asking for foreign investment. In 2009, 601 million US dollars. In, to, in 2010, it, it has reduced to 560. So without this bill, without this bill, if the foreign investment went down, you can imagine the situation once this bill is passed. As a university lecturer had commented the other day, this particular bill is an act of foolishness or a dead rope given to the government by some enemies within the government itself. You all know <coughs> that from 2005, we had serious problems with the international community. Now the problems are coming to a climax. For the right to life, with the white man syndrome, killing of parliamentarians, killing of media people, the right to life in Sri Lanka was in question. Then we had a, prob a problem with regard to the rule of law, where the rule of law is really upheld in Sri Lanka. Resolutions were passed in the European Union, in the European Parliament, the United States Congress, British Parliament, stating that there is no rule of law in Sri Lanka. Then we, there was a problem with regard to the media freedom. Not only, not only the right to life of ordinary citizens, but 
right to life of media people. Even you are living under threat. So the latest addition is the right to own property has been taken away. Right to own property. It is in violation of the uni- uh, it, is, it is in violation of the 17th section of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. The 17th section says that right to own property is a universal right. And the second part of it says it cannot be taken away arbitrarily. And that is exactly what is happening in Sri Lanka. We have serious problems with the international community without this bill. Without this bill. There is a thing called international law. Some people may not accept it. There is a thing called international law, just like the laws of Sri Lanka. There is a thing called international law, where we have signed and accepted the former president Chandika Bandarna Kumar Nunga and the former foreign minister Mr. Lakshman Kadirigama signed all the conventions. Human rights and all the protocols, they both signed. Because that was the correct thing to do and the decent thing to do. If you have nothing to hide, they have nothing to run away from international law. When you run away from international law, the conclusion is that you have something to hide. So that is the impression Sri Lanka has created abroad. We say there is no such thing called international law. We don't accept that. You can't live like that. You have to find a way. I am not saying the international community is 100% correct. But there is a problem. You have to discuss with them, talk with them. So, <clears throat> we ask the government to disclose the businesses that are lined up for acquisition in the next round. Because the media spokesman has said that there will be another round of acquisition soon. Another round of takeovers. So, we ask the government to disclose the Businesses, they will take over in the second round because the cabinet spokesman, the media spokesman has said so.